G'day, g'day, g'day. This is art class number two for three to sixes. And last class, we looked at observational drawing and drawing um, a mandala after you went outside and you took objects from nature and you brought them inside and you looked at all the detail and the patterns and the shapes and you drew it on a grid, a mandala grid. So, for example, here's one here. Okay, and what you were looking at, I did another one because I really enjoyed it. There we go. Um, and what we were aiming to do is to really appreciate um, a different way of looking. So art is about a different way of looking. You have to look at a big picture in art and try and understand what all the images mean. Um, it's easy if something's written down to learn and, and understand about it. But when you've just been given images, hmm, what's that about? So art is about learning about big pictures. And it's also about learning how to look at things in detail. So having a close look at things and then making artworks from there. So what we are going to do today is we're going to look at how to apply colour. So I hope that you have read your worksheet today and um, I'm going to take you through the steps of being able to apply colour to your artwork that you had. So some people can complicate this, this process of applying colour and I don't want to complicate it. Um, I want to keep it very, very simple for you so you can learn to build upon it. Now the way I do it is I choose three shades, three colours. So today, for example, I'm going to be choosing a dark blue, a medium green, show you the lead of that, and a light yellow, this one here. Okay, so you need dark, medium, and light. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to look at your object that you've drawn and you're going to have a look so that you can select your colours. Now for this one you can see why I would have chosen yellow. You can see why through some of these lines here that I might have chosen that dark blue. And then you've got the middle green here. If for example you were choosing a... Um, a I'm looking in my container here. Um, say you, you found a feather like so. You would be looking at dark grey. You might even be looking at a peachy cream as your lightest colour and then your blue as your medium, your middle colour there. Okay, so I'm going to tilt the screen now and I'm going to show you how to apply some colour to your drawing. All right. Okay, bear with me so that we know how to do this right. Okay, so great stuff. You should have your artwork. I can see what I'm doing here, making sure that I can help you by having a look. Yep, I'm going to colour in this one here, this leaf, this ginkgo leaf. So the first thing you're going to do, number one, is you're going to take your lightest colour and you're going to apply the lightest colour. Now, if you've applied lots of um, grey lead pencil, don't worry about it. You're going to be going over that grey lead pencil with your darkest colour. So those lines there are going to help you a lot. They're going to be lovely little guidelines or indicators for where to put your darkest colour and sometimes your middle colour too. So as you can see, I'm doing little swirly like lines all over it, colouring it in so that it feels nice and soft on the page. No sort of scratchy, rough, crazy sort of hands we want calm controlled hands because we care care about how we are applying it 
should feel quite relaxing to colour in, seeing that lovely colour go down. As you can see, we've applied yellow. Now what that does is if you feel the surface, it's given you this lovely um, smooth surface that's ready for the next colour. So it blends in a little better. Now with the green, I'm going to colour over some of the areas that I think would be nice to have that green. I'm starting down there in the base and I'm working my way up. Now this might mean that you have to use a little bit more pressure than you did the first time. Just a little bit more. You don't have to use swirly strokes like me. It's up to you how you want to do it. And now we have some green all the way down in there. Now green and yellow are close to each other on the colour wheel. So if you want to pull a uh, Google image up of the colour wheel to help you, when you're choosing your colours, it's a really good idea to choose colours that are close or next to each other on the colour wheel so that they blend well. All right. Because they're made up of each other. Green, green is made up of blue and yellow. That's why I'm going to use it. You can see the colours there. They've blended softly and gently. If I want to, I might then get yellow a little stronger, amount of yellow, and really push it in there over the top. Just to give it a little bit more brightness. You can always put, if you put your light down first, you can put dark colours over the top. That's easy enough. Once you put a really, really dark colour down, it's very hard to put lights over the top. So now I'm going to look at how then to apply details. So step number one, light colour first. Step number two, middle colour over the top in the areas you want it. Step number three, going around it, all your grey lead lines in the dark colour of your choice. And I chose blue because it's made up, green is made up of blue and yellow and I think blue just changes it up a little bit lifts it makes that green darker and makes the yellow stand out and there we have it some of these lines here might need to soften a bit so that they're not so harsh I'm doing just gentle strokes there Okay, so I'll give you an example here on this leaf of how to, on this, um, sorry, this is a protea, on this protea here, how to colour that in. So the selection for my protea is I've got these colours here. That's a very hard choice to make. I think it might have even been this one that I was using. Yeah. So I'm going to have a look at trying to find a really dark sort of brownie orange as my darkest colour. There we go. I'm going to choose that. I think it's rose matta carmine. I love matta carmine. And for my middle colour, I'm going to choose quite a rich orange. Okay. And then the light, light, light colour is going to be a beautiful soft pale pink so I'm going to use those colors so here we have the um, the protea here and I'm going to take you through the process again just to remind you what do we start with we start with light first so I'm going to not worry that I have gray lead lines that's fine the gray leads there and I'm going to go over and into each one of those shapes with my pale, beautiful pale peachy pink. Love this colour. Very pretty colour. Now on the Genko leaf, I coloured in 
using swirly lines. This time, because these protea um, petals go down, I'm doing the same thing with my hand, which means I'm respecting the shape of this protea and I'm trying to get that same sort of texture. So here we are, colouring in now. I have to go a bit faster than I want you to go because um, I don't want you to have to watch this the whole time, miss out on your own. There we go. So I coloured it in fairly quickly. The light. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose what? What's the second step? Middle. Middle colour. So I'm having a look here and I'm seeing where those middle colours are. They're sort of on the tips and towards the centre. So I'm going to get my middle colour. And because I've got this lovely surface now, that that pale pink has given me, it just goes over the top really nicely. And pale pink is made up of what? Red and white, sometimes a bit of yellow. So these two, because red and orange and yellow, red and yellow make orange, they're going to blend nicely. The opposite of orange is blue. So those colors conflict with each other. Okay, they're called contrasting colors. So in this task, I don't want you to apply them together. Here we go, I've applied a little bit of orange on top now. So it's changing and growing. Okay, last part. And this is the part where you need lovely controlled hands is we're going to go over the gray lead lines with our dark color. Finding all those lovely little areas. So when you do this, you really need a lovely sharp pencil. Otherwise, your lines might look a little bit blurry. You might not get that lovely sharpness that you got from your grey lead. So here we have one of the proteas here. So there's no reason why I couldn't have chosen a dark orange or a deeper red, but I've chosen like a purpley red. For this one here. And because I'm looking and I'm observing my protea, I've noticed that the tips are quite dark. And at the base under here, it's quite dark too. So going over those grey lead lines with my darkest colour. Okay, It's the simplest way to do it. There are other ways to add colour in layers, but I find that to be the best way to teach it first up. And again, if you put this darkest colour down first, it's very, very hard to apply any other colour because the dark just is really strong so you're not going to be able to get those light colors to sit on top well all right how's that going how's yours going at home if you've got mum and dad doing this task too it can be quite a relaxing task very rewarding now i'm going to show you a little thing to do so there's your three steps, light first, medium, and then dark over your grey lead lines. Um, 
You can then go over it again with some of your the first pale colour you have just to smooth it out. And there's no reason why you can't get a little bit of yellow or something just to sit over the top to brighten it up. Give it a little bit of a boost like so. Okay, so we have the Protea and the Genko. Okay, so I hope you learnt heaps about applying colour there. And I hope that you can post your artworks to me um, when you get a chance. So there's one that I'm working on at the moment as well alongside you hopefully you can if you have any questions you can you can go to you educate us and pop your questions in for me to for to answer um and you can also 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 when you are done even mums and dads if they want to post their artwork they can do that on you educate us as well and we can get some artworks up so it'll be great okay thank you everyone see you next week bye hope you enjoy the task bye